Mark uh, Lou with Sensational tonight. Uh, you put him back in the game late. Was that by design? Was it his call or your call to get him back out there? It was my call to get him back out there. It was his call to come out. He was, um, you know, the game was at like 20-something to start the fourth quarter. Um, and so I got him out there. He, he played early in the fourth uh, and he was gassed at that uh, four minute timeout. So I asked if he could go another minute or two or if he needed one and he said he needed one. So I got him out and then I got him back in. Uh, obviously we got the game closer. So I was trying to go get the game, but um, yeah, he was sensational. And the thing that I think goes um, really unnoticed with him is he guarded Mitchell the whole night, you know, and there's guys that get 40 in the NBA on, on certain nights, but I'm not sure how many of them guard a guy like Mitchell as effectively as Lou did. Um, you know, Mitchell had 22 on the game, and I don't think all of those were on Lou. We had other guys on him at different points. I think Mitchell probably only had about 16 or so on him. So for him to do it on both ends of the floor um, is incredible and, and a testament to his, his prowess as a defender. But obviously, he had an unbelievable offensive night. Uh, happy for him. You know, he works really hard. Um, you know, he deserves it. So thanks. Joe Masato with the Oklahoman. Mark, what impressed you the most there to, to close the game late, late in the fourth quarter when it looked like, you know, the game was firmly in hand and then you guys fought back to, to make it close again? I thought we, we competed for 48 minutes tonight, um, you know, which, you know, we've addressed, you know, in this last stretch of games, but we also got some guys back, you know, like Lou is back and his feet are obviously underneath him. Um, you know, that's like the most productive concussion ever. The guy at 42, um, you know, Baisley is back and getting his legs underneath him. I thought he was really, really quietly very good tonight. His floor game was great, uh, even though he didn't have as, as loud of a game. Um, you know, he was really, really good in the pick and roll and with his decisions. You definitely feel having Isaiah back and, and you definitely feel the depth. And I thought we competed for much of the night. You know, they're a really quality team and, you know, some moments in the early in the second and then in the third, you know, we just didn't sustain it all the way through, but uh, it's a good lesson. You know, you just have to have your foot on the gas against a team like that. But I thought, you know, we outplayed him in the first and fourth and I thought our competitive spirit and our togetherness was there all night. Paris Lawson with OKCThunder.com. Hey coach, I wanted to ask about that first quarter. Obviously Lou played a huge role in that, but what did you think of the way you guys, the, the punch you guys were able to throw to start the game tonight? I thought we were sharp. Our execution was really good. You know, the stuff that we tried to clean up and address coming out of our last few games in practice definitely showed up. I thought our execution was was great on both ends. Uh, and I thought we started the game competitively and, and you know, really well-intentioned. And that's how you have to start games. You know, first quarter is really important in the NBA. And I thought tonight we, we did throw the first punch. We made them play uphill uh, and credit them. They're a good team. You know, they got themselves right back in the game in the second and opened the lead up in the third. Uh, but we, we ran through the finish line, and I, I was pleased with how we played. Nick Gallo with Thunder Broadcasting. Yeah, Mark, uh, you know, Gobert's down there uh, playing close to the rim. I think they had 10 blocks. I think you all shot maybe 36% in the paint, but that didn't stop you from continuing to attack the rim. Uh, what did you make of your guys, just sort of relentlessness of spirit in terms of keep continuing to attack down low, continuing to attack Gobert? Yeah, I mean, that's why he's good because, you know, he can he can make you timid, you know, and you can't play like that against them. You can't play scared uh, of your own shadow down there. You know, you have to be aggressive. But once you're aggressive, you also need to know how effective he is. You know, and I thought, you know, tonight we showed a little bit of our inexperience around the basket with him, you know, with some of the plays we tried to make over him. Um, you know, he's seen that movie before, but you know, in order to effectively attack him, you need both. You have to be really, really aggressive and play at the basket, but then you have to be able to make really good late reads at the rim. Uh, and that's why it's so hard to play against him. But if we're going to err on one side, we're going to err on aggression. I thought we did that tonight. There's lessons we can learn. And, you know, next time we play him, uh, there's stuff on film that we can learn from. But I, I really thought our guys, you know, put their best foot forward tonight, and really competed. And I thought that was another example of it. We played at the basket. Barry Trammell with the Oklahoma. Yeah, Mark, early in the year when Lou was shooting pretty well, he would all, even on games he's shooting well, he'd have some shots that missed badly. He seems to be doing that less and less. Is that a sign that his shooting, not just his percentage, but he's getting more comfortable and, and just becoming a better all-around shooter? 
Yeah, and you know, I think it's it, shooting's tricky. You know, it's it's reps and it's shot selection. You know, it, those two things. You know, I think understanding which shots are, are predictably the ones you're going to take. Uh, and then getting enough reps over time where you improve at those shots is kind of the recipe. Um, and, and, you know, the, some guys come in the league and that's kind of what they do. You know, Ty Jerome's an example. You know, he's a young player. Svee's a young player. And those guys are obviously, you know, ready-made shooters. And they're working more on the nuances. But, you know, a guy like Lou, guys like Baisley, you know, that are developing players and that's not necessarily uh, their strongest strength. It takes time. Um, and Utah, you know, they shoot 37% from three as a team, but they've got a lot of guys that are like 30, you know, and that's something that comes comes with time. You know, they've really Bogdanovich and Ingles and, and all their guys. I mean, they kind of learn where their shots come from. They take very predictable shots. They've gotten a million reps. They've seen a lot of shots go in, and that's why their confidence is where it is. And players don't, you know, they're, they're not born into the NBA like that, most of them. And so... We have to be patient and we just have to kind of hang in there and, and help these guys understand what the what good shots are, get them the reps, and then hang with them through the ups and downs and lose season where he kind of started high and then had a dip. And obviously tonight shot it great. He is a good microcosm of, you know, kind of the developmental process with shooting, you know, and the patience that it requires organizationally to allow those guys to grow into really good, consistent shooters. Joe Masato with the Oklahoman. Yeah, Mark, obviously the 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 environment on offense for Lou is different when you're at full strength. And but this game, he's a primary creator out there. Um, and I know he is, you know, sometimes when when Shay's out there as well, but there's more offensive pressure on him. It seems like do you learn more about him in, in a game like this or what can you sort of like take away from uh, a high scoring performance like this from him? Yeah, I mean, you take, you know, certainly, and, and I throw Baisley in that category. I, I throw Teo in that category, Poku. Um, you know, these are guys that are getting invaluable reps as primary playmakers on a lot of possessions. Um, and we absolutely learn about it. And one of the dangers that you run into early in a guy's career, you know, Lou and Bays are, you know, kind of last year as an example, is they play effective roles on a team. Um, but you can you know, fall into the trap of kind of cornering them into that role and they never evolve from that. And you never really learn uh, where their ceiling is as players. Uh, and that's one of, you know, obviously we'd love to have, you know, Shea on the court, but um, that's one of the benefits of, you know, uh, these circumstances is we get to take a look at other guys. And then, you know, when you inject Shea back in, um, you know, Lou Dort, you know, there's other stuff he can do, you know, um, he's proving that right now. You know, Memphis, our Memphis game at home is a great example. You know, they were really denying Shea all over the place, and we use Shea as a screener. And in order to do that, you've got to have kind of a primary creator. And Lou and Teo, they're getting unbelievable reps on that right now. Uh, and it only expands their games, and it only expands the possibilities of what we can do as a team. It only makes us more potent one through five on the court. Joe Masato with the Oklahoma. 